This episode is brought to you by G-Tops. In the beginning, the idea of G-Tops was simply to let the light into your Jeep. Many Jeepers take the tops off. Freedom Tops make it easy and easy to store. What if you could let the light in every time you drive your Jeep? Rain, snow, sunny, it doesn't matter. That's G-Tops, letting you enjoy the outside simply and easily. Also brought to you by Get Where You're Going, and then keep going. <laughs> Gear, parts, accessories, built to explore well beyond where off-road goes off-grid. Real deals on performance parts and off-road accessories at realtalk.com. You know, I, I like that, real deals. I like the way they do it. That's professional writing there. You know, real deals <laughs> at realtalk.com. <laughs> real deals. Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show, where we put the fun in off-road fun, or the FU, as I like to say. So strap in, grab your favorite beverage, and get ready to laugh, learn, and have a good uh, good damn time. And by the way, if you're not, see, I'm thinking ahead, if you're not watching us on YouTube, you should be, because you get to see us in full living color, and you get to see this board that is stuck up behind me that has uh, various stickers. We're going to have pictures and a few things up there. Uh, listen more uh, in, in this episode to learn how you can get your stickers or pictures up on the board. On tonight's episode, in our news stories, Stellantis brands on the chopping block. Uh, so, uh, Chip, I think you know that uh, Jeep has been having some sales issues down year over year by oh, something like 20 to 40%. Uh, I think right. it has a lot to do with interest rates and just the economy in general. Uh, but uh, obviously, they can't, they, they can't, Stellantis can't just sit there and go, oh, well, we'll give it a year. It'll get better. Right, right. <laughs> the, that's, the, that's the downside to having uh, investors. You have to be actively doing something, even if it's actively bad. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're doing something. Keep us employed. We're doing something. Well, well I mean, they, they brought back the 392. I mean, shoot, right? Oh, I that mean, was, that was, I think it was dumb to get rid of it. Well, yes, but then again, it made news when they brought it back. Mm. Um, you know, Excellent the special point. Models, yeah. The, the special models that you were talking about with Natalie the other day on the show, uh -huh. um, you know, featuring, what was it, a Call of Duty or, or you know, all these different, you know, anything to entice sales, right? Do you do you wonder, is Bronco getting into their shorts a little bit? Maybe. Um, this is the part that concerns me. You know, Jeep's been on a huge roll. And there's more and more and more Jeepers. I I was a Harley guy. I I had a, I've got a Harley still, but Harley was the thing. Mm -hmm. And then Jeep's kind of been the thing. Are we winding down? I hope not. I think they I'm not. they may have just I'm hit. In. I'm all in. Yeah, they I'm, may I'm, have just I'm, hit saturation. Uh, once a Jeeper, always a Jeeper, right? But mm, we'll see what happens. Well, yeah, I don't I don't I don't see anybody else replacing Jeep. Honestly, uh, just the heritage. No, of, just the heritage alone. I mean. You can do other other things that are new and shiny and maybe fancy, uh, but uh, if you're if you're going to do it uh, with the heritage that's available, it, it's Jeep. So all, they also uh, we're also having our new story, Operation Barrel Roll. Chip, you're going to like this one. I think so. In our Jeep Gladiator <laughs> update, was buying a Gladiator a mistake? Did I make a mistake Ooh. buying a Gladiator? Oh. So this is this is like those YouTube videos where you see where it says. Before you buy a Gladiator, watch this video. And then you watch it, and it's like, I love my Gladiator. So it's just, you know, it's a whole thing to get up, get you in there. Oh, my God, what happened? I'm thinking about buying a Gladiator. i got to watch this video first. Uh, no, no, you're just you're just being tricked. It's sales. Uh, right. it, it's tricked, but, I mean, it is, it is basically sales. You've done sales before. You know how it works uh, with, with the customers that you have, that you've had for a long time. You don't necessarily really have right. to play that game. You can just tell them. But, but there's always, right. you always got to make it a little shiny, a little interesting. True. Uh, and in the, in the wood chipper, Black Hills <laughs> Adventure. <laughs> you know, right? everything fits if you use a wood chipper. <laughs> that's your partner. That's your accomplice in the wood chipper there, eh? <laughs> and our must-have stuff for your Jeep, a cheater pipe. And, and, you know, you and I talked about this before we started recording. I thought maybe I was late to the party on this thing because this thing looks like a no-brainer. And I, I just happened to see it while I was cruising uh, the Tic Tac. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is fantastic. This this makes a lot of sense. How? Why didn't I know about this? So, it, no, it's not a cheater pipe. It's actually a tool that you can buy. And we'll talk about that more here in just a bit. Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. 
Well, hi, I'm Chip, and I'm your co-host for tonight. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a recent adventure I had out in the Black Hills uh, off-road. So we'll uh, share some of that information uh, later in the show. Excellent. Good teaser. So um, is Stellantis selling brands? Have you heard anything about this, uh, this Chip? No, I really haven't. I don't, I don't stay in all the news for... Well, hell, I don't even watch the news. I got fed up with, <laughs> with all the main news channels. So if Fake it's on, news, if it's on yeah. uh, the internet, I might might watch it. But yeah. yeah. No, I, I didn't realize they were cutting it. I mean, I look at things, you know, over the years, um, I guess I was a Pontiac guy at one time. Uh, I, first you vehicle can't be was a Pontiac, Pontiac guy anymore. No. You know, I had a Firebird, uh, the you know, Oldsmobile. I mean, you look at, at what brands that are out there that were really good brands. Um, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to shed a tear if they lost Alfa Romeo or something like that, but mm -hmm. surely Jeep is not on the chopping blocks with that. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's really this rumor. Uh, now, I didn't know, maybe you heard about this, but whenever the Stellantis merger, I mean, that they did the merger and then they came up with that fantastic name for the company, Stellantis. Uh, <laughs> I think they were trying to find a domain that nobody had already purchased is the reason why they came up with Stellantis. But anyway... Uh, whenever they created Stellantis, rumor was that some of the brands might be cut after that merger. Um, and the, the ones on the rumor list, rumor list, I'll say that twice, Chrysler, Dodge, Fiat, Alfa Romeo, and Maserati. Again, if that list actually ever existed, that was the, the scuttlebutt, the rumor. And, uh, but Jeep was not on that list. And, you know, I think that we can all agree that Jeep is the golden goose that lays the golden egg. Was it a golden goose or was it just the goose? I think it's just the goose that all, because you could sell both. The goose wasn't golden, go but it did lay golden eggs, yeah. right? So, but, so I get it with Chrysler Dodge. I mean, and then, so Ram, right? The Ram trucks, that's not on this list either. No, I, I think, think Ram does very big, good. Yeah. Right. Right. But so to have Chrysler and Dodge, I mean... We had Dodge minivans, we had Chrysler minivans. I always kind of leaned towards wanting the Chrysler. It was a better, better, more recognized name. Mm -hmm. Kind of like buying a Buick instead of buying a Chevy. Um, Fiat is so well known overseas, though. Yeah. You know, I just over in Europe. I was in, in London and in Scotland, and man, there are a bunch of Fiats running around. A mm -hmm. lot of little cars. Yeah. That's a whole other story, <laughs> talking about me driving a manual transmission vehicle on the wrong side of the road. That was an that was an interesting <laughs> yeah because you were in Scotland. I wish I had. Uh, I, was in I wish you had. Uh, I wish I knew that you were going or had thought about it. I would have got you to find a McElroy uh, while you were there. I found one. Did you? I thought about you and found a, a book and found a little uh, family crest, but it was like fifteen pounds, which equates to oh, about twenty two like, bucks. Oh, is it? I was I thinking it was like it. thirty. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> but I think it's M C E L R Y. Yep is the yes. uh, the original uh McElroy name and if you guys don't know that's my last name is McElroy and and growing up <clears throat> there was no uh, no McElroys other than the immediate family uh I mean immediate family grandparents uh, aunts uncles and stuff but so there wasn't a, a, a huge number of McElroys and I never ran across another McElroy in school I didn't go to a small school so it was a, a very unusual name and then my mom did some uh, some genealogy research and uh, the the name goes back uh, to uh, 900 AD, I think, uh, that McElroy thing. So anyway, yep, I saw it. That's cool, and that's really neat. Uh, I guess it's more common over there where uh, where it was invented. So um, the uh, back the three years whenever the the merger happened, they were uh, talking about uh, these uh, these 14 brands. Uh, the, the there was a list of a, a 10 or so that was uh, they may be dropping. Well, they didn't get dropped. And uh, Tavares, I believe is how you pronounce that, the CEO, the new CEO of Stellantis. Uh, yep. And he said, uh, no, we're not going to drop any brands. And he told all 14 brands that they needed to submit a 10-year strategic plan. So I guess that's good. Because, I mean, if you got a bunch of people working, you got a bunch, you have everything set up, it's probably not a good idea just to drop something. Uh, because it's going to, it's going to hurt you and it, you may be, uh, you may drop the wrong one. So, um, but, uh, now the, there's rumors about this uh, going on and I, not in the article that I was reading for this one, but in an article I read, um, they were talking about dropping Maserati. See, I think that'd be a mistake too. I mean, that's like their race car. That's their Ferrari, their, 
I mean, that Corvette or Corvettes. Um, why would you drop a Maserati? I again, some of this time, are they doing it for publicity a little bit, or are they don't? Oh my gosh, don't do that, and we'll be loyal to the brand. I don't know. I I think the biggest mistake a company can make is that they come in and first year make dramatic changes I agree. that are long term. Um, once you drop a brand, how do you bring it back? Right. I, I, I don't know. Well, it's like so. the DeLorean. The, the DeLorean's back, but my God, that was a long time without it. <clears throat> I didn't even realize they were back. Yeah, they are. I saw, again, on the Tic Tac, I saw that uh, they, they actually showed the DeLorean. It doesn't look like the uh, the original DeLorean, though, which was that was just a cool vehicle. Uh, very futuristic. Um, so, so having an electric DeLorean, I mean, with the flex capacitor, mm. maybe that's the answer to the electric vehicles. Oh, is that what? 2.5 gigawatts that you need. Gigawatt. Just jig it, just jig it a little bit. So, uh, but you know, it, things are getting tough, uh, at least with Jeep uh, brand as the sales are down. So I can very well see uh, that if you're going to keep Jeep, you need to make it uh, where um, you can stay in business to keep making those Jeeps. So I don't know that it's that bad. Uh, and uh, I mentioned about them uh, maybe dropping uh, the Maserati. So uh, I think it's interesting that uh, Jim Morrison was replaced uh, with some guy that was working for Maserati. And I got to, mm -hmm. for my, me personally, I wonder if maybe he was moved out of uh, Maserati because they wanted to keep him in the company because they were thinking can, about getting rid of Maserati way back then. It's possible. Or, I mean, you, when you get to the top position, it's tough. It's really it's the people, well, but but they're making long-term decisions. They're making, they're not the ones deciding what the new dash is in a Jeep or or whether they make a, what do you have? A trail rated Renegade uh, <laughs> Willys edition for Brazil or yes, something you were talking yes. about the other, day, the other day in the show. I mean, you had me, I was sitting there listening going, what a trail rated Willys Renegade. And then you said only in Brazil. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's all right. We will we'll allow that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, the top guy just needs to give him good direction. Now, I love the fact that Jim Morrison was a Jeeper, right? And I'm sure, Still I don't know that Damn it. he's not dead. Maserati guy, <laughs> has, he even, has the Maserati guy driven a Jeep? Does he, or, or is he just corporate? I think, um, so. I think I remember hearing he was out at EJS 2024 and he was, I think that he uh, rode, he may have driven uh, some Jeeps, but, you know, kudos to him because he's actually trying, it seemed anyway, that he was trying to embrace the Jeep, I mean, you're responsible for it. You should know something about it, right? Yeah. But, I mean, well, just, just because be you boring. should doesn't mean, especially managers, there's there's pan managers that don't know their ass from all the ground. Uh, so I'm, I'm sitting back thinking about the movie Ford versus Ferrari. I need to see that. I've seen a lot of clips. Oh, you haven't seen that, that movie? That looks like a great movie. Oh, my God, you have to see the movie because in the movie, uh, Shelby takes Mr. Ford from Ford Motor yes. Company on a ride. That. I've in seen the that car, scene, yeah. And he... I think Mr. Ford shit his pants and, and, and enjoyed the hell out of it. That was the cool thing. And I'm sitting here thinking maybe we need to get this guy from Jeep out there on hell's revenge and let him feel tippy and see how, how he does. Right. Yeah. Off camber. The, 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 yeah. We're going to change off camber to just call it the John Lee. <laughs> nice. So what about this operation barrel roll, Tony? So uh, are you aware of, of this, this incident that happened with the Gladiator where there was a high-speed chase and the Gladiator Only was struck? Only because you and Natalie talked about it briefly okay, on, good, on good. the recent episode. So there were several places. I think Motor Trend actually did a, 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 a blog post on this. And uh, you can see the, the scene that is the scene or the, the image that I've seen a lot of. I mean, there's, there is video out there, but I think the stills are the thing that are most prevalent on the Internet. And, it's uh, like the Duke of Hazard. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, the the Gladiator wasn't the thing that did the barrel roll. It was uh, I think oh. it's it's a Murado. Is that how you pronounce that? The uh, the Nissan Murado. Murano. 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 Uh, yeah. It was the one that hit the rear tire, passenger side on the Gladiator. I think it was trying to go between two vehicles that were going you know like highway speeds, and this guy was going like a hundred or something. And the yeah, screw um, around and find out. Yeah. yeah. So it, it literally uh, takes off in the air and uh, winds up. Uh, I think it's on its side. It may all go all the way to the on the top. I can't remember. Uh, but uh, it basically does a barrel roll right next to this gladiator. And you know, the gladiator is on 40s. 
and it has a three and a half inch lift. And you can see that the 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 mirror on the Murado is higher than the Jeep, the Gladiator. Oh yeah. So it's it's up there. It got some height. It got some air. Yeah. It got some air. But so the sad news though, when I was listening to you and Natalie talk about it, was what's the what's going on with the Gladiator? I, I the Murano guy, if he was fleeing the police and did this stupid move, he deserves what he got. But I'm worried about the Gladiator and the owner's got his vehicle stuck out in California and they're trying to total it. That's that's the sad part about mm -hmm. the story. So, and it was just tonight, right before us recording this uh, this flagship episode, uh, I had a great conversation with Chris. Uh, he is the owner and the driver of the 2022 Jeep Gladiator. And um, it is a very interesting uh, and not a happy story. Um, uh -oh. And you can well imagine that just, he was on his way back from a trip to Mexico off-roading. Off he lives wow. in Utah. And he was, uh, I think they had been on the road maybe five minutes uh, here in San Diego after getting fuel. Uh, and uh, we, it was a, a really good conversation, really interesting. And uh, right. yeah, so uh, he had no idea that it was a, this was about to occur. Um, uh, one of, it was a three, uh, a th a three gladiators that had gone to Mexico and they were on their way back. They were actually on their way to Vegas. And uh, I wouldn't bet after this. Uh, but uh, they were actually yeah. on the way to Vegas uh, when this happened, and the I think it was the guy in the back in the Gladiator that was at the the the, the, the tail end of this convoy um, got on the CB and started uh, you know high speed chase high speed chase, and it it wasn't until uh, he it was funny Chris said that uh, that the, his his buddy said it like three times, uh, but he said it twice before he realized he wasn't saying anything to the microphone. He had to key up the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> So on the third, on the third high speed chase, he heard on the radio and he said he, he went to look around and uh, just about that time, there was a Murano Boom. cruising by the gladiator in the air <laughs> after wow. being struck, but it wasn't a yeah, hard hit. There wasn't like anything, uh, internally that, uh, that, that, uh, hurt him and his wife. There was no kids in the Jeep. It was just him and his wife and they were uninjured. They were surprised. Uh, and, uh, the Jeep was drivable. Uh, after this, well, uh, in the picture, it looks like his fender flare is flying through the air with the Murano. Yeah, it kind of looks like a snorkel. I yeah. think we made that comment with uh, when I was talking. Yeah, to I think that's Natalie. his fender, rear fender it flare. Is. But basically, he caught the back back wheel. I mean, you you've seen jeeps in parades or jeeps at events where they oh, yeah, pull the, up the on the each wheel other's stand, tires. Or what it's called? Yeah, right. And I, I always attribute that to cheerleaders buying jeeps because they're trying to make a pyramid or something. Right. But in this case, I mean, yeah, it hit the rear tire pretty hard, but I don't see any structural body damage. Even the fent, the rear bumper doesn't look like, it just looked like he clipped the tire. Mm -mm. Yeah. So in the conversation, I don't want to give too much of it away because I want you guys to uh, to watch it. And I say watch it because uh, I have gotten permission uh, to use the full video, dash cam video that's going to be supplied to me. And I'll be cutting into the YouTube video for this interview. Uh, oh, by the way, the interview will be on August 16th, which is a Friday. It's our interview episodes. Uh, and uh, I'll try to make the the video available on Friday as well. But I have to edit the audio and the video. I know it's, it's Tony problems, not your problem. But it, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just letting you know it may not be out on Friday, probably uh, Saturday. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll have the, the, the clips for the, the actual dash cam uh, video and uh, some stills. Because, Chip, there was damage done to the gladiator after this happened after after the event some major damage that occurred after the the, the uh, record driver uh picked up the the gladiator and took it oh crap yeah so that was very disappointing and uh yeah let's just say that he's having some issues with uh with the insurance company and uh, of course he's mm -hmm. heard nothing from the uh, Murano. I don't know if it was a stolen vehicle. He doesn't know if it's a stolen vehicle or what exactly happened. All, all, the only thing that uh, we both know or both have heard is uh, the uh, the registration was out on the vehicle, and it, hmm. the vehicle was being pulled over for um, out of date registration, and they fled. Well, why run from that? Right. <laughs> well, so I mean, if you've got a warrant, the, or the guy's got a warrant, or if you're on probation, that... although I, I think you can have an expired registration sticker. And, and, and be on probation. I don't think that would put you back in jail. So uh, it'll be interesting. To, yeah, we, we'll, yeah, it'll be interesting to find out about more information. But he hasn't heard from the insurance company. The only insurance company he's been dealing with is his own. 
Uh, so right. this is this obviously should be being taken care of uh, by uh, the, the 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 whoever was in the vehicle. And uh, if it was stolen, I mean, doesn't insurance still cover if it covers the vehicle? I would. I don't know. I mean, it's a non-authorized driver of your vehicle. I'm not sure how. I don't know enough about insurance on that one mm-hmm. to make a call. But in any case, I, I'm still really. I'm going to listen on the 16th for sure because. I want to hear about what the tow truck driver did to his, did to the gladiator, or what happened to the after this. Because from the picture from this from this impact, and it's drivable. I mean, I'm not sure I would have let a tow truck guy grab it, well, other than it, if it, there may have been have, some damage to the rear axle. No, it was it actually was the the front axle that got, that took the the brunt of the damage. Uh, oh, okay. The the front hmm. axle was bent, and it looked like the the ball joints had been stretched, according to him. And no, uh, so, so there was, he drove it about two miles and uh, okay. then, he, then he parked it and waited for the tow truck. Cause it wasn't, I was hoping it was going to be one of those great Jeep stories where you see the, you know, a totaled vehicle and then the Jeep goes, you know, I don't care. See you later. You know, I'm not thing. Hurt. Yeah. I'm not hurt. yeah. Not hurt. Okay. It's a flesh wound. Yeah. Tis yeah. but a flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> you have no arms and legs. <laughs> I'll bite Come you. Back, you coward. Yeah. <laughs> There's, All so, right. there's somebody out there that doesn't know what we're referring to. That's hilarious. All right. Monty Python. You got to be a Monty Python fan. I'll let them wonder. I made my kids watch those over and over. Oh, so. yeah. Huh. yeah. All right. So um, Jeep driver identified. Does that make you nervous when you hear that? I mean, I, I know you're a good guy and everything, but when you when you hear Jeep driver identified, do you, do you kind of seize up a little bit? Does the cushion get a little tight around your anus? No, not at all. I, I want to be identified as a Jeep driver. My wife had to drive my truck the other day, and she was waving at every Jeep that went by. And she got to work 30 minutes later and realized, wait, I'm driving my husband's F-150 today. I wasn't driving a Jeep, but she was waving at all these Jeeps, and nobody waved back. So I really like being identified as a Jeep person. Well, I'm mean, sorry. I should have said the police saying Jeep driver oh. identified. Well, yeah, that might be different. <laughs> So, did you see the Jeep Tesla crash? That was another popular thing. I didn't see that. This is news for me. So, I no, I didn't. Uh, so, there is a video from the Tesla. Uh, there is a uh, this. The, you see the picture that we have here in our show notes, and you you guys can right. look at the show notes by going to jeeptalkshow.com. Um, there was a uh, I guess it's a white uh, a JLU, uh, yeah. and uh, you'll have to watch the video, Chip. But basically, it's the the, the Jeep is making a turn from the the left towards and then it makes the turn into the tesla and it slides because they're mm. they're making the turn too quickly um i can't see it here but i suspect it's a 392 <laughs> it looked, well the hood the hood is a 392 hood okay good so they have that made sense to me it. is the yeah was it like they're using that 392 and then they go to so, make a turn and they're going too fast so was the but was the tesla in self-driving mode <laughs> now, now I don't have it in this story, but I have read that they did not have self-driving. Uh, th- that Tesla did not have that uh, activated, okay. which is okay. strange because in the video it shows the 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 Jeep um, JLU sliding and running into the front of the Tesla, and then the hmm. Tesla backs up, goes around. I think it actually hits the Jeep as it's going or trying to go around it. And then makes a uh, the left turn where the Jeep came from and drives another 100 feet or something before it pulls over to the side of the road. So huh. everybody thinks hey, it's, it's the self-driving. The self-driving went nuts because everybody hates AI. Everybody And some people hate Tesla and they don't want them to get the full self-driving because that's against the, the laws of nature. And they find any opportunity they can to say, see, see, this is what I'm talking about. Well, it wasn't even on that Tesla. It, full self-driving yeah. wasn't there. So I think what happened was, is the, the driver of the Tesla freaked the fuck out and was doing yeah. stuff <laughs> that, that they weren't aware of because they were, the, the adrenaline and, uh, and stuff was going. They were, they were in shock. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah. anyway, uh, the, the Jeep did leave the scene. So no. police have identified the driver. Uh, so the driver accused of hitting the Tesla with a Jeep uh, on a mountain outside of Las Vegas and driving away hmm. was identified according to Nevada State Police traffic crash report. So the suspect hit and run the driver is a 38-year-old. Is that Asha? Asha? And then H-O-V-Han. Oh, my God, that's a long name. That's, that's worse than McElroy. 
uh, who lives in Las Vegas, according to the documents. She faces two civil infractions. (laughs) Yeah, I did that on purpose. Uh, A misdemeanor citation, according to court records. Traffic violations are uh, failing to decrease speed or use care under certain certain circumstances, an unsafe turn using improper position uh, or method at an intersection. The criminal complaint charge is uh, duty to stop at a scene of an accident involving damage uh, to vehicle or other property, which is driven slash attended. So um, the Tesla driver, Radu, uh, boy, this is a melting pot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Vegas. Yeah. Reversed and rammed into the Jeep. The car continued accelerating forward as it turned to the left on Lee Canyon Road and swerved into the mountain as well as across the road before coming to a stop. Uh, When the Tesla reversed uh, back to the intersection, the Jeep was gone. So I'm thinking it's like, uh, oh, the Tesla guy doesn't, you know, have you ever had an accident where the person, they they don't want to do anything other than just leave? I mean, it's your fault. You bumped into him or something. And then they just oh, take I've off. A, I've got a, I've got a story about that. That I was, I rear-ended a car at a stoplight on an overpass. I mean, I was not used. This was before there were very many stoplights on overpasses, and there was a stoplight down in Alabama. And I bumped, I, I slammed on my brakes and probably was going two mile an hour when I bumped the rear end of this car. Yeah. And and the they they roll forward about twenty five feet because they had a manual transmission, so they pop the clutch, roll forward, and then the. The passenger gets out holding her neck going, oh, and I'm sitting there going, oh, shit, this isn't good. And the owner gets out and we look at her bumper. We look at my bumper. There was no damage to either vehicle. And I said, well, I said, I don't know. I said, uh, I guess we call the the cops. We'll have to call the police and report this then. And and, and the, the driver says, no, no, that's not necessary. And she didn't want to have anything to do with the police. And the other girl's grabbing her neck going, oh, my neck. And. The driver looked at her and said, shut up, bitch, and get in the car. We got to go. <laughs> so, so apparently the driver had some issue with the police that she didn't want to have anything to do with it. Exactly. So, yes, yeah. I've experienced that. Yeah. It, the insurance issues or maybe a warrant Something. or, yeah. Warrant. Yeah. Who knows what? Right. She's just like, shut up, get in the car. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been hit where uh, it's like, especially with aftermarket bumpers, I got hit in a, a toll lane uh, out here in Houston. Good. And it was this this kid that uh, he didn't know that you had to stop. And if you don't have a, a little thing that uh, goes through the uh, the reader, uh, that you have to stop and put change in the machine. Right. And I stopped right. and put the change in the machine, and he ran to the back of me. I was in the XJ, and I had that that big ass bumper uh, on right. there, and uh, it didn't do anything to it. I don't even think it left a mark on it. Uh, right. So, but anyway, it was uh, I, I didn't do anything about it. He, he had to deal with his dad on it. <laughs> so so here here's my interpretation ashia i'm not even going to try to pronounce her last name it was probably a rental or her boyfriend's jeep hopefully she's not a real jeeper if she's going to behave like that right well they may have thought like i was saying they may have thought that the tesla guy had some issue and was driving away and he drove off yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing that people have to understand and i really think it's important that there are so many security cameras everywhere Ah. and there's and their teslas have cameras out the wazoo uh that that they use and i think it's the same cameras they use for full self-driving so um every tesla is going to be able is going to be recording you uh, about what you're doing and um i mean you should do the right thing without cameras but if you you have a momentary uh, i got to get out of here uh, before they get my license plate or anything like that, I didn't. I didn't notice that this uh, this Jeep had a front license plate. So, no, it didn't. It doesn't look like. Yeah. So I don't know about Nevada. Maybe you don't have to have them. But so, how much damage was done to either vehicle in the accident? Like, was the Tesla the, really beat the up? The Tesla was. Uh, I, I don't have a picture of it here, but as I recall, it was uh, it was damaged pretty badly. Uh, yeah. But keep in mind, they got to build those things kind of light because uh, the battery technology isn't uh, isn't where it needs to be to drive a, a, a heavy, well built vehicle. I True. mean, I think it's fine. I think they're built just fine, uh, but uh, not 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 like a Jeep, especially with aftermarket bumpers. But this does doesn't look like it has an aftermarket bumper. Maybe it's a steel bumper. This is probably uh, I can't read the side there. I, I don't well, think that says Rubicon. Uh, yeah, it does. Does it? That's a lot of hey. letters. Well, wait, what is it? It looks like it's a Rubicon or maybe it's a fake Ruba. 
Maybe they put something else on there. I think it, I don't know. It looks like it looks like a three ninety two. Oh, I guess Rubicon. it does. It does look like Rubicon. The 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 letters and are the just squatting. Three ninety two. So I'm thinking it was a three ninety two Rubicon, which means it did have steel bumpers on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and I think you're probably right as far as I think the driver was probably inexperienced with the right. the torque, the weight. Uh, I mean, and you know the Jeeps just don't turn on a dime. I mean, they they, they can do very well. Uh, but uh, I can well imagine if you're used to driving a light vehicle. I remember just adding the uh, the wheels uh, and uh, tires, the 32 inch tires on the XJ, made a huge difference in maneuverability uh, with the stock oh. tires and stuff. It it was uh, very much more maneuverable. So my version is her boyfriend's got this 392 Rubicon. Her Prius had to go in the shop because the hybrid was messing up, and a Prius driver got in a 392 and didn't know what to do. Oh God, that's my that's my story. Yep. That sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. So with this Jeep rollover thing, what's that about? So I was enthused about this story when I initially read it because it's like, well, I mean, I don't like the idea of somebody getting injured or a Jeep being uh, hurt, but I was enthused because somebody was using a Jeep as a, as, as a Jeep and they, and something happened and they rolled it over. And then I found the picture uh, for the gentleman yeah. that was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, the gentleman driving I mean, the Jeep. He's like a gangbanger for sure, right? <laughs> it's, something. He's something. Uh, I, I suspect something. there's a man bun back there. Mom, uh, mama be proud. Yeah, yeah. Austin uh, Carrier, it looks like, is the, the gentleman's name. So a Ver Vermont man is due in court next month uh, after he was involved in a crash that left another person seriously injured. Uh, Vermont, uh, Vermont State Police charged 20-year-old Austin Carrier with gross negligent operation resulting in serious bodily injury for an incident last month at uh, what was that Sandgate? Well, that that sounds promising too. It's a, like an off-road yeah. destination. Yeah. So, according to police, uh, Carrier was towing a jeep, and this just goes downhill from here. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's kind of a pun. Uh, in, in his, uh, with his uh, his vehicle uh, with a chain up an incline when the drive Not shaft, good. and this is interesting, when the drive shaft of his vehicle broke. Uh, you do it one out. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't think that this is something that would break a drive shaft, but you're probably right. It's probably the the, no, the U joint. U joint dropped and you dropped the drive shaft, and there you go. So it caused both vehicles to roll backwards. Uh, the person, oh, and there was a person in the Jeep uh, steering it, <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> which was an 18 year old woman, uh, mm -hmm. tripped and fell while trying to get out of that vehicle and was run over. Oh, this is horrible. She had to be airlifted due to severity due to the severity of her injuries. Police said uh, Carrier turned himself in on Saturday and was processed before being released. So, so, okay. I, there's a vehicle towing me, and I'm in my Jeep, and its drive shaft breaks, and they start rolling backwards. Why don't you get on the brake, yank the emergency brake? Stop both vehicles. Why is she getting out? I I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you're in the area where it snows and ice ice is up a lot, right? Oh yeah. So explain to me why. And I haven't seen these videos in a while. But explain to me why when somebody is sliding down a road because it's so icy, they're not going very fast. They jump no. out. They bail out, and then they slide on the out, the ice next to the curb. They're getting out of the no. vehicle. I don't. That seems like the most unsafe thing to do. The safest thing is remain in the vehicle. Even if you slide into a ditch, you know, if unless you need to clean out under your exhaust pipe so that the snow doesn't, you know, carbon monoxide you. Right. But other than that, stay in the vehicle, especially if it's an icy road where other vehicles could slide off too, whatever the case oh, God, is. But, yes. And if you're out, you, know, you could it, get uh, pinned between two vehicles. Why don't get out of your vehicle? But why, why didn't you just, I mean, common sense would be yank the emergency brake, stop both vehicles. And the incident's over. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she got pulled uh, from the chain, which is another thing I don't think people should do is use chains to So, even to if tow. his drive shaft goes out, doesn't he have an e-brake? Doesn't he have brakes still functioning where he could hit the brakes in the truck? So, I'm going to remind you from the top of the story. This is a 20-year-old and an 18-year-old. <laughs> I get it. I get it. And, a and a chain. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You can and, check off a and, lot of boxes here. And, and yeah. the hormones are raging because he's helping a cute girl. <laughs> hey, there you, now, now the story gets better. We don't have a picture of her, though. And I'm questioning this dude, this, this picture. You go into the show notes and watch. look at this dude. He's not dating a cute girl. 
I'm sorry. So you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, it's sad. Uh, she was uh, she was injured. She shouldn't have been. Uh, and uh, you know, maybe maybe learn a little bit about towing and stuff before uh, before you start towing a, a vehicle. Uh, you can always buy her a nice set of flowers instead of towing her around. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. the, I don't know what the ultimate deal that, that was struck though was made. So who knows? <laughs> he was just trying to get to the destination so he could collect. I guess. Wow. So you can go topless every time you drive your Jeep. No worries about rain, snow, hot, or cold. Seeing clearly through your freedom panels is simple with G-Tops. G-Tops is a patented system that's been around since 2008. G-Tops block 99% of UVA and UVB rays. Impact uh, modified acrylic, which I think you've said it's like the, what they use in the helicopter uh, bubbles. Yeah, and, the and canopies, airplane. right? Yeah, yeah. Impact modified acrylic means... Makes for a quiet and cool cabin. Computer modeled to keep Jeep crash test specs required by law. G-Tops are quality. They're OEM plus. So see more with G-Tops on your Jeep. Whether it's a JK, a JL, or a JT. Go to G-Tops. I'll mess that up, Tony. <laughs> Go to G-Tops.com right now. So um, I have a set of G-Tops in my 2021 uh, Jeep Talk Show Gladiator. Uh, Jeep Talk Show Chris uh, has a set of G Tops in his uh, 2020 Gladiator. He just got those uh, maybe a month or so ago. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Anthony uh, won a set of uh, G Tops for his uh, JK. I believe he has a JKU. And nice. if you haven't seen that video, Chip, you need to see the video of him uh, uh, not exposing to his wife. What do you call it? <laughs> Having her sit in the Jeep and look up, you know, to get her first right. Uh, right. You know, feelings on this. Great video. Sure. Makes makes any uh, man that has a girlfriend or a wife just feel good because she is just so amazed by this. And damn it, I think, the the, I think the JK, uh, the JK G tops are bigger. You know, the area that you see through. Uh, and I'm sure it has to do with the the way the the freedom tops are made for the JKs. Sure. Uh, but sure. so they're even bigger, uh, I think, on the on the JK. But they're fantastic. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're they're just fantastic. I highly recommend. They are a paid sponsor uh, of the show. Uh, and uh, but but I just love them. I mean, it's a little scary because what they do is they take your uh, freedom panels. And cut mm -hmm. and install the G top insert into it. You got you can buy the G tops uh, in Freedom Tops. They're just a lot more expensive because you're buying a Freedom Top and the G top modification. Uh, so I was a little nervous about that because they're going to cut a hole in my Freedom Tops. Freedom Tops are not cheap. Um, right. So uh, fortunately, I got to uh, I got some loaners uh, when I went to um, EJS, and I loved them. And I was looking yeah. forward to getting the, the G tops and uh, they're great. Oh. Wife loves them too. That's cool. So you've just taken delivery of your brand new Jeep JT gladiator, spotless painting, gleaming in the sunlight. Oh, I love this. This is more professional writing. Uh, <laughs> you ponder mods and upgrades. One of the uh, JT gladiators greatest strength is its massive aftermarket presence. However, this sizable catalog sparks some questions like which products best suit uh, your gladiator and which modifications come first. It's it's a great it's a great problem to have. I like it. Fortunately, <laughs> Real Trucks team of experts has done the hard work for you. Uh, we do this on the Discord server. We love spending other people's money. Oh yeah, get this, get this, oh, yeah. get this. Yeah. Oh yeah, get this I, and post up some as pictures. Soon as, I bought, as soon as I bought my wife's JLU, the guys that helped me spend like five thousand dollars. I'm like no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, fortunately, Real Trucks team of experts has uh, done the hard work for you. This guide outlines the top mods and upgrades for the Jeep JT Gladiator, bolstering aesthetics, off-road performance, ride quality, and more. But wait, there's more. Uh, read on for the comprehensive blueprint to take your JT from bone stock pickup to a well-rounded rig. Real truck experts recommend the Superlift 4-inch standard lift kits regard, uh, regarding lift kits and leveling kits. A modest lift is a lift kit is arguably the best bang for your buck suspension system for the Jeep Gladiator. The Superlift 4-inch standard lift 
is one of those products, offering a, tr a taller ride height, improved off-road performance, and enhanced ground and fender clearance. Superlift is reputable, U.S.-based sup suspension manufacturer, renowned for its reliable construction, exceptional quality, and affordable price points. It's also a real truck brand, meaning any Superlift product uh, comes backed by real trucks, industry-leading customer service, and unbeatable warranties. Now, this is a blog at realtruck.com slash blog, so you can read the entire blog and get more information simply by going to realtruck.com and just do a search, uh, realtruck.com slash blog and search for best Jeep Gladiator mods and upgrades. Hmm. So uh, I've heard of the super lift thing. I I've, I'm honestly had never looked into one, but this sounds really, really good to chip. Uh, what, uh, what lift kits do you use whenever you're putting a lift kit on your vehicle? So uh, on my CJs, you know, we're back to the BDS stuff, the old things, but, um, but with my JKs and with the JLU, I'm going to be probably doing a TerraFlex lift just because I've had great experience with it and it's worked well. I know a lot of guys are using um, some of the other lifts, you know, and J JKS has got a good set. Um, I'm drawing a blank, Tony. What's the one that... TerraFlex, uh, Mopar. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, the gold-colored one, but I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I'm, uh, people I'm, are yelling at the radio now, right? Yeah, well, that's that's good. When we mess up like this, it's always an opportunity. Ah. We can say we can say we're doing it on purpose to get more interaction. But Superlift Metal was Cloak. a brand. Metal was Cloak. It? Metal Cloak. I'm sorry. Yes, Metal Cloak. Great company. And and I, the what I've seen on my friends' jeeps with Metal Cloak, outstanding. Um, I don't like the color. Super. Super. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's super that's a, it's that's, not the, that's the most important thing on the on, on a lift, right? The color. <laughs> the color. It's, it's critical. But Super Lift was an old brand that there were a lot of people that put Super Lifts on. It and, has been around for I a long time. The key here is it talks about budget. I think it's probably at a price point that may be more affordable. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know a lot about Super Lift currently. You know, if if uh, if Real Trucks bought them out and it's part of their brand, I'm. And they're standing behind it, right, with their warranties and oh, that so, means a lot. Customer service, uh, and yes, and and they got yes. the bucks to make sure that yeah. uh, you're happy with the product. Right, right. All righty then. It, it, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And 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 you guys, I, I haven't said this in a while. Uh, re uh, Realtruck dot com is a reoccurring sponsor for the Jeep Talk Show. So. You guys go over to realtruck.com and check out their stuff. There are so many companies that are now that you know of that are now part of Real Truck. Uh, so there's a huge place for you to go and look and see of all the things that they have available for, for Jeeps and other vehicles as well. So uh, so help support the the companies that support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. Go to realtruck.com today. Gladiator. My name is Gladiator. Gladiators. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Gladiator. All right, so my question was, uh, did I make a mistake uh, buying the Gladiator or the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator? Uh, and uh, I'll just, I mean, this isn't good, uh, good sales technique, but I'll just start with, I have to say, I love the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't make mistakes. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> oh. I don't care what the DNA test says. I'm starting to think that I'm just not a Wrangler guy. Um, it, it, back in 1998, when I got my first ever Jeep, uh, I was going to buy a brand new TJ. I love the TJ. I think the TJs are great. Um, but at the last minute, uh, I switched to an XJ, uh, primarily because... Had two little girls, three and four years old, and uh, my wife was ready to get that TJ too, uh, but uh, she agreed. And also too, and this is a lifelong thing for me, um, for both of us actually, my wife and I. Uh, the uh, the XJ was a really bright, beautiful red. The only thing that <laughs> wasn't red on that Jeep was the tires and the wheels. So ah. it was just wall to wall red. All right, so Tony, you've got two TJs or three. Who well, you have? Two or three TJs sitting in the driveway. Um, three, well, uh, two right now. Uh, there's, okay. there's one, there's another one that isn't here. Okay. But you, you've got, so you've got TJs, you've driven T so, but that's, that's not considered your vehicle. Right. Right. Your wife, your daughters. Right. But, 
They're nice. I like TJs. Uh, I wish I had bought a TJ because had I, and I've mentioned this before, I, I love my XJ, uh, but uh, had I bought a TJ, I would have been able to go wheeling a lot sooner than when I, I mean, basically it wasn't until I got the Gladiator that I could actually drive long distances and take it off road. Um, yeah. So uh, I still plan on getting the XJ off road. Uh, there may be some, some modifications I do to it. Like I think I'm going to take all the, uh, all the lights off the the front bumper and uh and I, the the bumper uh the winch bumper is very low so i think that uh the winch in there also too i bought a kit <clears throat> for the the winch the worn winch that i had on it before i moved it over to the gladiator that allows me to take that top part uh off the the winch and then mm -hmm. relocate that i forget what it's called relocate that thing uh, i just never put it on there so uh whenever i get the xj uh uh set up again uh, and get a winch in there i will be able to really have a, a really good airflow into the front of it. So uh, I still don't think that I should have to do modif a bunch of modifications just, just so I can drive the, the XJ on the highway. But, oh, well, there's uh, what you think and what reality is. <laughs> well, originally your your Gladiator was going to be a tow vehicle for the yep. XJ, right? Yes. But, and Tony, I don't know that it's fair to say you're not a Wrangler guy. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's so it's a, it's a JT, not a Wrangler, but from the for the bed yes from the bed forward that's a wrangler oh yeah absolutely i love so, it it is it is yeah. really nice and uh the only thing i don't like about it is uh the sound the 3.6 makes because i really like the sound of the 4.0 the 4.0 well, has a great sound put a different exhaust on no i'm not going to go that route i remember <laughs> uh, i had a an 83 uh, short wheelbase uh, chevrolet 4 4x4 four four, uh, that right. I had uh, 37 inch tires on. This is back in my twenties. And, uh, I went, uh, with my, uh, my then boss on a deer hunt and it was, it was four or five hours away, wherever the deer lease was. And I had modified the, the exhaust on that, uh, that truck. I bought that truck brand new. And, uh, when I got home, uh, I could hear the v in my head from driving it <laughs> that, and that rumble, that constant rumble. Uh, right. and, and it's like, eh, I don't need all that. I just want something that allows good air to pass. I mean, everybody, I think everybody knows engine is just an air pump. So you want to get a lot of air <laughs> in, you want to get a lot of air out. Uh, right. and, uh, that's, that's the real reason to, uh, to modify your exhaust, not for sound. I kind of laugh at the, the, the trucks and stuff that I see out there now and they have that rumble and stuff. And I go, you crazy kids, uh, you know, <laughs> It makes no difference other than just get people to look at you. I'd rather people look at me because of the color, the size of the tires, and uh, uh, you know all, all that stuff, uh, the visual thing, not the the audible thing. Well, I got passed in Chicago today by a Porsche, um, nine thirty, and when it went by me and it made that rumble uh, that a Porsche makes, I was like, oh. I mean, I, it was just a white car. It wasn't anything special. There wasn't anything special. I mean, it's just a white Porsche, but he apparently modified the exhaust a little bit, but it sounded like I was being passed by. Well, you've heard of 392, uh, right? A Jeep 392? Oh, yeah. What a, I mean, especially when it first starts up. Oh, my goodness. That's just a wonderful yeah. sound. And that's factory. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that's factory. And I don't think it yeah. makes a lot of noise when you're driving it. Uh, but when that, fir that first start up, oh, there's, no, there's no sound like a V8. And, you know, there's, there's going to be generations ahead of us that will never know. I mean, you'll see it on videos and stuff, but as far as being there in person and hearing and feeling that rumble, they're not going to know it. No, it's more than just the sound, right? It's, it's. The smells. It, yeah. <laughs> the smells. Because there's no, definitely the a smell. the vibrations it's giving off though too. I mean, the hell, you, you stand close to a V8 that, that, that revs on the gas. I mean, help even stuff in my pants jiggle. I mean, it's like, whoa, that's cool. That's funny. I don't carry change anymore. So that's interesting <laughs> to find out that you do. So I've been very impressed with the JT. Power, comfort, payload, and towing capacity, and it's still a Jeep. So if you're yeah. on the fence for a Wrangler or a, or a Gladiator, well, uh, I think I would do the same thing. Uh, the Gladiator is just really nice. Now, uh, it can be argued, uh, would I say the same thing if I had had a JL or even a, J, a JK or uh, a JLU? I think it would be fun to have one, a JL or a JLU, but honestly, uh, I think it would be my wife's. I'd drive it, sure. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. But as far as a modified yeah. off-road rig, 
I, I like the idea of the gladiator. There's something okay. that just stands out to me, uh, having an XJ for a Jeep and a JT, because it's not the thing everybody got. Everybody went for the Wrangler. Well, that, you're talking to a two door guy here. So I'm see, that's what I would do. If I was going to get a JL, <laughs> it would be a JL, not a JLU. But my, I know my right. wife, she would want a JLU. She wants that back seat to carry the things. The practicality of the four door. The four door is so practical. Yeah, I mean, well, absolutely. that's a great vehicle. But as but, far as before as uh, dr the, the how being nimble on the road and especially off road, I, I just, uh, yeah, two door I, all the way. But they don't hardly sell yep. those things. And, and I, I've heard from Greg Henderson several times that they were Jeep was concerned about doing the four door. They didn't think it was going to sell, but I well, but I guarantee you yeah. that if there had been a a four door Wrangler available when I was buying the 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 Cherokee, I and not knowing the Cherokee at all, I absolutely would have gone with a four door Wrangler because it fit everything that we needed. Uh, we yeah. needed a four door. We needed places for our, our girls to sit, and and actually the four door Wranglers. Have a lot more room getting in and out. the 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 Cherokee four doors is is really an afterthought, and those doors right. are really narrow. Yeah, but when I first saw the four doors, I was like, I don't think I like them. And I I really go back. I kind of think that was about the time that Hummer was going through its issues, and and there were a lot of people wanting to buy Hummers. And Jeep comes out with a four door Jeep that I don't know. Well, it doesn't look like a Hummer necessarily. It's a Jeep, but. I think their timing was perfect. People were tired of driving minivans. They wanted another vehicle. They didn't want a station wagon. Right. Uh, it, was ge it was genius to do the four door, and they outsell the four doors. Outsell the two doors all over the place. Oh yeah. But me coming from a CJ background, I, I, I'm going to drive it. I'm going to have a two door. Um, but we've got a four door too, and there's reasons for both. Small um, and nimble Jeep. I mean, if you got a, it. but if you got a family, well, I mean, you know, you can. Uh, throw three kids back in there, or maybe you got friends that want to go with you off roading. It makes it a lot simpler. Right. So, uh, yeah, there's. I, I think it's great they make both of them, but uh, I yep. like to think that if I was buying a JL, it would be a two door. I think of the the two door because it reminds me a lot more of the TJ. Uh, and uh, it's not like there's not a back seat. I mean, the the there's there's still seating in the back for the two door. Uh, the JLs, right? I mean, they've got a sure a bench seat. Sure, or something same like as there. same as the TJ, same yeah. as the CJ. I mean, it's just getting in and out of it. I mean, a, a, I'd hate to have to crawl back there and put somebody in a car seat. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But if the kids are seatbelt sized and they can get back there, fine. But I'm not getting in the back seat. Uh, <laughs> all right, Chip, or I should say, Wood Chipper, um, you <laughs> have some stuff to tell us about. What was it again? I forget. Uh, 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 well, it's been so long. We've we've been talking here for a while. What what, what were you going to so talk about? Well, a few weeks ago, I we took a trip out to the Black Hills, and I just thought I'd share a little bit of the highlights of that. It, People it was wanna, a personal Our trip. listeners want to know what that clicking noise is. I'm sorry, the clicking <laughs> noise will stop. It's, <laughs> it's it's a time bomb. It's got a, it's it's time sensitive. Um, the the too sensitive of a mic and an ink pen in my hand. Well, um, sensitivity so, when you get older is a good thing, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of oil, a little bit of lube. It'll be okay. So the we took a trip to the Black Hills. There were about 15 Jeeps. Um, what a great time. Uh, you know, it, when you start planning trips and you're trying to map things out, I had been out to a jamboree out there, but I hadn't led anything or, or been involved. Um, there were three of us that kind of led the trip, and we worked. And actually, a local one of the local guys from the Black Hills Jeep Club, um, Ty, was really helpful in getting some of the maps and files so that we could put them on our on our uh, Garmin Overlanders when we were using those to navigate. But we we went on some really good. I, I was talking to a guy that was with Best Top, and he feels like the Black Hills area of South Dakota is probably some of the most natural off roading. It hasn't been created where they drug rocks in to make obstacles or or really even necessarily graded roads. Now, yeah, there are some graded roads you have to drive down between trails, but a lot of it's just natural wheeling, and it was really fun. We we went on a few of them. Uh, one of the trails was called Iceman. Basically, it's rocks nonstop for, I don't even know how long, probably a mile and a half or two miles in, and you drive out into this ravine, and then you turn around and come right back out. But um, we went on a, another one called Fruity Pebbles and another one called Got Milk. Hmm. Um, <laughs> down in, they, they, they call it the Cereal Bowl area, but... Um, Fruity Pebbles doesn't sound like an intimidating trail. No, it doesn't. It it had boulders, and the boulders were moving under your wheels. And the, every, so you might watch the Jeep in front of you, 
But by the time you got through the obstacle, everything shifted, and now you got to find another line because it's oh, that's and these neat. Are rocks, yeah, these are rocks the size of basketballs or maybe bushel baskets that are shifting around under you, and you've got to really watch what you're doing. And we were crawling through it, but it was just a blast. And we went down through uh, another creek bed called Calamity. Uh, just some really good wheeling. the The interesting thing was, out of the 15 jeeps, we finished with 14. The one that broke was a 392 uh, on 40s, <laughs> and the rest of us were on 37s, 35s. We had a guy on 33s. We all made it through, but unfortunately, the the 392, he was doing an obstacle that we didn't do, and he got up on a rock, and when he dropped down, it actually broke his drive shaft or bent his drive shaft really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was he was doing kind of an optional thing. It was actually a, a later at night thing, and it was a five hour recovery off the trail. Oh, that wow. was fun. Yeah. Uh, but outstanding trip overall. You don't have to do those really aggressive ones. Some great scenery. And then what was really cool too? We took one. We were wheeled for four days, and then we took a day to go to Mount Rushmore, go through the wildlife oh, loop. Indeed. I'd like to see that. Thing. Yeah. And then there was a, a a highway called Needles Highway, and it's a very winding. It had a lot of switchbacks in it. Um, you weren't. It, it's blacktop, right? So you're on a blacktop pavement. So you could have done this in a in a Prius, but. It was a lot of fun in the Jeeps with still, the tops open. Still much and, more fun to do in a Jeep, even if you can do yeah. it in something else. Yeah. Correct. Correct. But it was a gorgeous highway. You come through, it's called Needles uh, Highway. You you actually, there's there's arches you go through that you couldn't drive an RV through. So there is height restrictions on this road. But when you come through a couple of them, you actually see Mount Rushmore maybe 10 miles off in the horizon. And so you come through a tunnel and then you come out and there's Mount Rushmore in the distance. So just is it's a fantastic place to go we stayed in deadwood or near deadwood we were in a campground but um i would i would highly recommend it the sad part is there's no uh, badge of honor trails there but outside of that uh it's a great wheeling destination but you probably do need to check in with the locals if you're going to go that way very very cool it sounded like you had a a great time <clears throat> and speaking of oh, speaking fun. of a great time from the mind of nikki g Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I just caught the episode where I made my hunchback joke. <laughs> and Tony, you've always you said you've always wanted to try to work in an osteoporosis joke, <laughs> and uh, I got to tell you, a joke about bones that, that's just not humorous. That one's oh. got to make you think all the way back to your tenth grade biology got it lessons. Immediately, that's that's a scary no, that's thing. That's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to tell you that. A woman passed out on the airport baggage claim carousel. Yeah, don't worry. She's coming around again. Oh. All right, boys and girls. Come on, that's funny. I'll chat yeah. you later. You have a good one. Bye. It's so yeah. funny. Even I'm laughing. <laughs> if you can't laugh at your own jokes, who can laugh at that's them? That's right. So, that's right. Did He didn't make any claims for this year to be 20% more funny or anything, no, did he? I think he learned his no. lesson. So um, I was right. I think I actually mentioned this to Chip earlier before we started the show. Uh, what do you guys think? And Chip, what do you think about uh, the these segments, these Nikki G segments uh, being video, especially for our YouTube videos, which you can go to. And if you go to YouTube, you can just do a search for Jeep Talk Show. And then when you're there, make sure that when you're watching one of the videos, you smash that like button and subscribe because uh, – Every one of the episodes that we do, uh, we have a, a full color motion video. It's not a still image or anything like that. I mean, there's there there are those there, uh, but I would say the last 50, 75 episodes, uh, all full motion, full color uh, video. So, yeah, uh, check it out. Well, and that gives you the opportunity to see some of the pictures and images, right, as we go through on the show notes. And, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you get a, a – it's more interactive, Um I still tend to listen to it as a podcast while I'm driving because that's sure. when I have the time. But uh, but I love watching YouTube's. And well, you know, I've mentioned this before. I to, cause to me, it never made any sense. Why would you do a, a Talking Heads video, especially when it's about an hour long? Uh, why would you do a Talking Heads video? Uh, that just seems like a hard thing for somebody to, to sit there and watch. Of course, a lot of people have more than one monitor so that they can you know, always have the thing up and they're just listening to it and maybe they can look over and, and look and see something. Uh, that they uh, that that you know they want to uh, might see that's interesting, uh, but I think it was actually uh, Fu Bob that told me but with his uh, TV set up in his garage, uh, he uses that a lot with uh, like the Fire TV stick. Uh, he yep. uses that a lot to watch YouTube videos whenever he's going to be working on his TJ, 
And cool. it, it's just really simple to watch the Jeep Talk Show on the Fire TV. I mean, it's just YouTube. So there's, Wait a there's you're, nothing you're, he has to do special to listen to the show. Yeah, but you're referencing Bob. So Bob's the one that was at Easter Jeep Safari running around with the shirt that had the YouTube certified on his sleeve, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Like when he's watching videos in his garage on YouTube, he's watching how to fix his TJ. Yes. He's, that's part of his certification. Absolutely. But I'm just saying, so if you have a TV or maybe you need an excuse uh, for your spouse, <laughs> Uh, there you go. You get the, the, the fire TV stick, which is next to nothing. You get the, the TV, right. which those things are next to nothing, nothing, a, a right. mount for the wall. And now you can be out there in the, in the, the garage and, and you might want to make sure that you're, uh, you're uh, listening to the, the Nikki G jokes when nobody else is, uh, else is in the garage or if you're trying to get them to leave. Uh, but, uh, right. but yeah, I never yeah, thought about run. that. It makes sense. So you're not watching the whole, a whole hour of talking heads. You're busy no. working on your Jeep or whatever, but you're being entertained by the show. And then if you see something that you want to see, you can just turn around and look or look up, depending on the, sure. how you're working on sure. the Jeep. So it makes perfect sense to me. Yep. So yeah, it's really cool. Yep. All right. in our must-have stuff for your Jeep. And uh, I, I, I was kind of thinking I was like uh, not um, – I was late to the game on this because it just makes too much sense. I hadn't heard about it either. Um, it's, you know, I think everybody has used, and there's going to be somebody out there that doesn't, hasn't done this, but I think everybody's used, uh, a, is it just, would you call it a wrench? What are those, not initially a combo wrench, or I guess it could be a combo. One is the open end, uh, the other one is a box end. end. Yeah. So yeah, it's the um, standard wrench that people think of without being ratcheting or right. all that stuff. Yeah. Right? And then there's some that have uh, two different sizes, uh, one on one size on mm -hmm. one end, one size on the other. I always get the open end box end wrenches. Uh, and uh, yeah. those things are, are very handy, especially if you're uh, uh, trying to turn a large bolt or nut. Uh, they're long, you get a lot of leverage, but sometimes they aren't long enough uh, or you're not strong enough, one of the two. So you'll take another combo wrench and wiggle it on there. I always have to try it two, two or three different ways. Actually, I'm getting better about it. And then you have that a longer overall wrench, and now you've got that leverage so that you can you don't have to apply apply as much force. My hand starts hurting. I'm I'm applying so much force oh. uh, that the the wrench is pushing into my hand, and it makes it hurt. Right. So somebody has come out with a wrench extender, uh, or, or I like that they call it a torque amplifier, which it is. Uh, and it's really cool. It's just a, a piece of metal and it has two like little, uh, lips, uh, little, uh, folded over pieces of metal that fit, uh, onto the, the, the combo uh, wrench. And now you don't have to worry about it slipping. You don't have to worry about, you know, while you're pushing down the thing, you turn it a little bit to the right off. and it comes off. Right. You just hook this thing. Knuckle. Yeah. You just hook this thing on there and, and press down or press up or whatever you're going to do with it. And it's, it's $16.99 from Amazon. So wrench extender, extension, torque amplifier, tools for mechanics, or even YouTube mechanics. It looks like it's going to about double the length of your wrench. I mean, yeah. I've, I've gone as far as taking the handle off of my high lift jack yep. and using it as an extender. Yeah, cheater but, pipes. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cheater pipes. And yeah. I've always sure. used cheater pipes or the, the second uh, uh, combo wrench to do things like right. this. Right. They also yep. make, at least uh, not necessarily this company, <clears throat> but available on Amazon, I'm sure other sources. They also make ones for um, um, ratchets. ratchets. Uh, yeah. And I'll just caution everybody that uh, you can put too much pressure on a ratchet, depending on who built it. So you may damage you your ratchet, uh, the mechanism yeah. inside, the ratcheting uh, portion of it. So be yeah. careful. Good. Yeah, be careful Good. with that. But they, they make them for, for ratchets as well. So uh, what is it? Don't, uh, don't work hard, work smart. And I think you can actually work smarter with this uh, torque amplifier. Cool. Hey, you were going to plug your interview too with Steer Smart. So I've got to do that. That is just really cool. <laughs> um, I think I think we talked about this. Maybe we talked about it before the show. Uh, but I had a great interview with uh, Jay at Steer Smarts, and uh, Chip, you've you've heard and you've spoken with Greg Henderson on the on the show, and he is just a yep, wealth a wealth of knowledge. Uh, plethora, plethora of knowledge. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to look that up. And uh, I will tell you, Jay is a lot the same. That interview that we did, uh, I, I did not have to milk the information. Jay was handing it out. It was great information. 
And uh, he even talks about <clears throat> how they bought a, uh, a JLU. I might have just been a JL, but this, the stock model JL, uh, so that they could um, uh, you know, look at the steering components and, and build stuff when the, when the JLs first came out. And he said mm-hmm. within 500 miles, they had death wobble. Well, the the first of the JLs. So that's when you change over vehicles. Do you want to have the very first of the new model? Um, those first JLs, they I had a friend. That they, they were going to make parts for it. <laughs> yeah, well, they needed to make parts for it because they had death wobble issues out of the factory. I, I had a friend that bought one, a uh, Rubicon uh, four-door, and was one of the first ones. And he had it. They actually ended up sending it back to Toledo, to or maybe Detroit even. But I, I think they sent it back to Toledo to get it retrofitted because they had some corrections to make mm-hmm. and and so that's that's understandable yeah, they yeah. made some but, but you know, it, some changes but, but it, should not, it. it should not it should not go out the door in that configuration you wouldn't think but did they put enough miles on it that and maybe they didn't have death wobble on their prototypes or well, what have you, you will but, hear in the interview that they were warned by steer sparks yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but any in any case, I I am a proponent. Uh, I love steer smarts. I've got them on my JK that I pound off road. Uh, they're heavy duty. If you hold a steer smart part up and compare it to the stock or even some of the aftermarket ones, you're going to love how thick they and robust they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, we'll be talking to Jay with Steer Smarts uh, coming up uh, Friday tomorrow. Uh, just go to steersmarts.com and look at all their mm-hmm. lovely parts. Uh, but That's going to be an episode I'm looking forward while, to. While you're while you're enjoying the uh, <laughs> enjoying the the video, and we do this is also a video one. You're going to watch it on YouTube. All right. So in our must have stuff for your Jeep, I'm messing with you, Chip. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I went back. I'm trying to cover your back, Tony. You didn't oh, have to. It was great. Skip it. Uh, I would have got a, a nasty <laughs> note from Jay saying, "Where? What happened? What happened?" <laughs> You don't love me anymore. So, you know, it's always a little sad when we hit the end of the trail, just like the end of the show. But there's always another trail slash show coming just down the road. No, you don't have to get on the road to listen, but you can. Um, Jeep Talk Show has five episodes a week, Tuesday or actually Monday through Friday. Yeah, I know. Chick Chat has been missing, but it's there. We're going to be doing a lot of them. We got uh, a full staff now. Uh, we just got to find the right time to, uh, to record because uh, everybody's been busy. Uh, one at one recording time or another, but it's coming. So five episodes a week, chick chat on Mondays. So you need to subscribe and never miss an episode. And speaking of subscribing, consider keeping the Jeep talk show going by being a Patreon subscriber. And the neat thing about Patreon is, and I haven't mentioned this in a while. The neat thing about Patreon is, is that, uh, you do not have to listen to the ads that we do on the flagship episodes. So if you're if the if the the ads are bothering you the live reads that are bothering you although I think they're they're really interesting and entertaining uh, I, of course I would I'm part of it uh, you don't have to get those so if you if you don't want to have advertisement on the flagship episodes just become a Patreon subscriber and you'll you'll wonder why the show is only uh, fifty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the discounts more than pay for your membership. That's very true. We have a lot of discounts on there and uh, you play your cards right. Good Lord. I think it was Zabo that uh, he told me he saved $500. He spent mm-hmm. a lot of money, uh, but uh, of that money, it was $500 less uh, than uh, it would otherwise would have been if he wasn't a Patreon subscriber. Yep. So the yep. place to go for all the information on how to subscribe and how to contact us is at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Chip, thank you very much for making time for us uh, tonight here on our flagship uh, two episode. And uh, we Thanks, love brother. it. Love it whenever you're on. Have a great night. Thank you. Broadcasting since 2010. A very slow wave. (laughs) You're my friend. You're my new friend.